Today we're gonna talk about uh, a little bit of Ottoman, like their playstyle and how differently can you really play Ottoman. Also a playstyle which is gonna be more common in uh, Season 5 thanks to the changes. Uh, the changes of the trade bags and also the changes to the Sipai, which is gonna make the Sipai insanely strong. So there is like two playstyles so far as I know when I'm playing with the Ottomans. The playstyle of Feudal Olin and the playstyle of uh, going castle. So you can see uh, when you go castle you go Anatolian Hills for securing 8 sheep and a sheep gives you 255 food so that's 8 times 255 food so you're gonna have enough food for H3, reaching H3 and also making a, a lot of units so the H3 kind of build uh, pushes you to make archers first so you're gonna ignore the gold for a long time right you're gonna make um, archers you're gonna set a lot of leisure on wood a lot of leisure on food and get the first uh, range damage upgrade on your archer. The reason uh, behind that, because when you go uh, H3, you can easily, now listen to this, easily kill knights with your H3 archer. So this is another different kind of play. So this is, I think this is going to be a feeder all in just watching Papipo, how he plays and how he scouts the map. This is going to be another H3, uh, H2 all in. But you can see one thing is really weird, like how Puppy Paul playing the Ottomans, that he didn't go stone. He's ignoring the military school. So let's see what's gonna be the age up timing with ignoring the military school. It's gonna be 224, which look at that. This this is really smart. When you have a deer camp really close to your TC like this. And you put the landmark on the deer camp. So th don't forget, this landmark act as a drop off point, food drop off point. Which means, even if he finishes, when he finishes these deers, you can just put farms around the Twin Minaret Madrasa. Don't forget that. You can put farms around this landmark. Because this is a food drop off point. So let's see what Papi Po is gonna do soon. He's going H2 with a really good timing, by the way. Also, we can go with the caster mode if somebody wants to see the numbers on, on like each type. So he left the tree villager on gold. I guess because the Weber and any other upgrades, but we're gonna see. And now he's slowly going to stone, I guess, for the military schools. Poor villager on the landmark. And reasonable age of timing. Double house. So this this is, I must say, a different kind of approach for the Ottoman feudal play. And I think Papipo found a better way to play the Ottomans. The reason behind that, I think you can ignore the early military school. What if the Abbasid goes with the uh, military wing, right? So if the Abbasid goes with the military ring into H2, he's gonna have two archers and two spearmen, and your military uh, school investment was like for nothing. So we can see that Papipo immediately goes with the wheelbarrow. That's the perfect choice to do that when you have like three villager or two villager on the go left. Uh, you immediately want to get your economical upgrades. You can see that like he is getting the W Brodex, he is getting the wheelbarrow. I think the next one is gonna be. Um, the forestry or either one of the damage upgrades. So he sent two villager on this stone. Military school immediately on Sipahi. So when you get your military schools in feudal, you just want to put them on Sipahi, like immediately on Sipahi. Like you don't want, oh, you don't want them to uh, be on archer or or uh, or spearman. The reason behind that that putting on Sipahi, because you saving a lot of food. That's the only reason why you want to put in on Sipai. And with that, you, you can just only focus on wood. So now, <clears throat> Puppy was just focusing on wood, making, making archers, 
pumping out, you can see he's now on two archer range, easily just spamming non-stop uh, units. And both of the military school is on Sipai. He already has seven village, uh, seven uh, archer and one Sipai, eight archer. He is immediately pushing. So this is what other people like. Um, like there are a lot of people I'm coaching right now and uh, I'm trying to like somehow implement this kind of thing in their brain. Even if you have one archer, don't sit on your base. Like don't sit at your base. Like why are you sitting on your base? Even with one archer, that one archer can go and harass his villagers easily. So, Papi Boy is making the archers, pumping out. We can check his base. He's adding the third archer range. So the thing that you need to know, you can easily support three archer range with uh, with the Ottoman, because most of your villagers are gonna go to wood. You are getting food by having the two military school, right? Because you are not spending two hundred food every minute and thirty seconds, twenty five seconds. Oh. Look at that, the first kill with, with the with those archers running around the map. Look, he's not sitting at his like most of the problem that, that my that the lower division players, lower ranked players does that they are sitting here. Papito sends his army immediately on the front when he has to make like ramps. Then the, his archers are over there and making the ramps and not making the ramps here, right? So he's still looking for uh, free villager kills, looking where he can do any kind of uh, any sort of damage to to his opponent. And as I said, three archer range, perfect. He's slowly adding more villagers to the food. There are like a few reasons behind that. Uh, when you do damage to your opponent, let's say you destroy a TC, okay? So or let's say that you destroy two TC. With that, you want to go next stage. So do you, uh, can you see it like Papio is not adding more production buildings? He's just sitting on the three archer range plus the two military school. He has three Sipai already by the two military school. The, uh, as I said, the reason behind that, like he wants to go slowly next age. And that's your goal as well when you are playing um, Ottoman. You don't need to fully all in in feudal. You can do a little bit of damage to your opponent. Like the example here is like pushing the TC with two or three rams, uh, killing a few villager, doing some economical damage to your opponent. And uh, that that's going to be the key for victory as well, because he's spending food. Now your opponent is spending more food than you, because uh, he has to protect, right? Also look at that villager snipe. So he has to protect, which means he's gonna non-stop spending food, which for you, that's, that's perfectly fine. There's no problem that the enemy is spending a lot of food. So you send a lot of uh, villagers on the on the food as well, and you're slowly going to next stage. But, Papi will realize that Beastie is not really gathered that much of a food, and his military production is kind of very late. So the... Papi po changed his mind, but if he if he saw like a huge army, he wouldn't he would have not done that at all. He would have still have a lot of villager on food, because as you can see, like he grabbed like six six villager off from food and put it on wood, because he realized, hey, my opponent has nothing, so I can just feud all in this and win this game, right? So he checked the BCVs, there is literally nothing. He has like what five archer. That's his main food source. He never gathered this food. He the beast is not on deers. So Papi was thinking like, "Hey, dude, I gonna send all my villagers into wood, and it's time to all in this shit." And he gonna just pump out more and more and more archers. He's pumping nonstop those archers. And also he set his meta on attack drums and not on uh, range defensive drums, which kind of kind of weird for me. I mean, that's fine. There's no problem with that. At least his uh, archers are gonna be really strong in this engagement right because the attack speed so his main focus first focus is to kill the enemy archers so after that he can focus on the villagers so this is losing one tc and again puppy po is not really focusing on food he is adding more and more production abilities as well because he is in a food family and also he had a lot of 
food and slowly he gonna add more villagers to the food search, source he has but doesn't need to anymore Basically, was not gathering on this wood as I said and also he gonna push away from his wood so the reason why BC is surrendered because he got pushed off from the wood this is the second wood this is that's not like really uh, clear at all uh, hard to protect and he was not gathering the deers he was not gathering these berries so this is one of the play styles of uh, of the Ottoman that you can do and it's gonna work out on the ranked ranked ladder uh, I'm gonna show you another play style that I'm recently uh, doing a lot is the H3 with the trade landmark. All right, let me show you this kind of play with the Ottoman. All right, so. For me, I did the uh, military school early, but you can ignore the military school, you can go straight. So I tried this with going straight H3, but the military school, the reason behind that, why is it so good? Because uh, if the enemy is like French or you are not, uh, you, like you are scared and like, oh, I don't know if I can protect these villagers early on. Uh, if the enemy is uh, English, I do not suggest doing this. If the enemy is Mongols, don't do this. So it only works against those factions that can't really Dark Age rush you. English and Mongols both can Dark Age rush you. So I rather suggest against the two factions to make two scouts, get as many sheep as you can, and go H3 with that. So as you can see, I'm uh, I'm gonna build a military school, cause what what did I do? I gathered fifty stone, I built the mill. I just I just build the mill. So I didn't do anything. Just place the mill. The villager gonna drop the stone inside the mill. Just don't even click anything. Don't even do anything. They gonna do automatically. So they drop the stone inside the mill, and that gave me the fifty stone to build my military school. So everything is uh, basic and simple in the early game. Your goal is to reach H3. I made a little mistake. My H3 landmark should be in here and the H3 landmark should be here. So yeah, this is a little bit mistake by me because my H3 landmark should be here and H3 landmark should be here, but that's fine. So enemy is going next stage as well doing the Chinese thing as what, what they always do, right? So, as soon as I went next stage, I set my military school on the archers, because the archer is going to be your main goal, the, your main army that you need to have. So now I'm just putting villagers on food, just put a few villagers on gold, and making the traders, making the traders, making the traders, and going HD at the same time. Your biggest goal with rushing H3, not really that attacking the enemy base. That's a really good goal as well, but to collect all the relics. So you must, when you go H3, you can harass a little bit the enemy, you can make knights, you can make everything, but at least you have to collect three relics. So the only way that this kind of build works, if you collect at least three relics, if you don't have at least three relics, you're gonna be a little bit struggle. With, with, with your goal, but with this, uh, you're gonna be fine, really fine. And also, you have to get all of your uh, military school. It's really, really important to get your military school. So I went next stage, I was like, okay, I'm gonna harass the enemy. China went to TC. China usually go, goes to TC and goes H3, as you can see with the clock tower. So I was like, hmm, China gonna go uh, clock tower? I'm gonna set this on Springle. You don't have to uh, set it on Springle, you can keep it on Mangonals, you just have to remember that you are on Mangonals, right? Or you have you are on Springles, or you are on Battering Rams. I uh, usually, I put the Mehmed Imperial Armory on Rams, because I think, I, I'm, don't, uh, I don't know, but I'm, I think like it's like one and a half minutes, or maybe two minutes, one and a half, two minutes, something like that to make a Ram, it's perfectly fine, I tried that. I used it, I like it. Okay, so as, I, as you've seen, I sent my archers in, so I'm doing damage 
to his economy, right? That's and that's what I said that you always want to do damage to the enemy economy even if you have like two or three archer you always want to go outside you always want to do uh, some sort of damage to, to, to your enemy i already killed eight villagers so i'm stabilizing the economy numbers right sadly i'm losing my mangonel because i was busy on the map uh, and i did not watch my mangonel sadly uh but you should not watch your man uh you should not lose your mangonel so meanwhile I'm focusing to collect the relics, you can see I already have one relic and building up my military school, I have all my four military school uh, so there is a vizier point that I want to show you this vizier point is the most important so you're gonna go Anatomy and Hills, Military Campus and Advanced Academy so you're gonna get your archers out and after that you get this vizier point, you can see I'm gonna get it in a second yeah, and I'm gonna set all my military school into Lancers. So now they are producing Lancers. You want to do that because you're gonna add like a few more uh, Archer range, a few more Sables, but mostly Archer range. And you're gonna spam the combination of Crossbowmen and Archers. Alright, let's see what's gonna happen soon. So I'm making Rams because I wanna, I wanna push him off from wood, right? So my main goal is to push Divine off his uh, off from wood. Like he doesn't have wood anywhere else. He has like a few little wood, but it's not really, not really nice. He has a little bit of wood here, but that's not much at all. So I want to push him off from this and this wood. By that I make a few ram. I got a few spring gold because my Mehmed Imperial Armory, and also. Uh, I got a few average as well, like I got the level 1 chopping, the lumber preserver, uh, wood gathering technology level 1. Uh, I got double upgrade on the range damage because that's gonna be very important. The palace guard has only 5 armor if you get plus 2. Their base armor is only 3, which means uh, with plus 2 I do 8, 9 damage, sorry. So I do 9 damage and you can calculate it like... Um, so when the palace guard has 5 armor and you have 9 damage, you are doing a hell of damage to the palace guard, right? So you are uh, doing 3 damage per shot with the archers to the palace guard, which is, I must say, that's, that's cool, that's really good. There's like literally no problem about that. Uh, you are doing really, really a lot of damage. Okay, so here's the fight, I'm sending in my units, I'm trying to kill... I try to do as much damage as I can. I'm kidding. I like. I'm focusing his military first, and after that, focusing the villagers. But first, always, always, you should focus the military. Then, all, then, when you have like a spare time, a spare time of uh, focusing his uh, villagers, do that. Because even that he's on two TC Song Dynasty, only twenty villagers is the difference, right? So listen to me. 20 villagers is the difference right now because uh, he's on 2TC, so on Dynasty, sorry, 23 villagers. But I, having the military school, he has to transition into farms. I don't have to yet because I'm gathering the food from the map, right? So I'm gathering, also I still have sheep thanks to the Anatolian Hill under my TCM because I collected the first deer pack. Uh, I already collected three relics, so I have the... 200 and, uh, 168 gold per minute, which in the next season is going to be 238, almost 240. So the next season, this is going to be worth of three, uh, three relics. Right now, it's just only two relic. And also, I'm getting 240, and then I'm going to get another 80 gold per minute when I drop this relic inside this mosque. Also, I have three sites, which another 300 gold per minute. So you can see that I'm sitting on 900 gold per minute and I have how many villagers? <laughs> Only 5 villagers and I already get 900 gold per minute. 1000 wood uh, per minute and 680 food per minute. So you can easily see that how the numbers are going up. Like capturing sides, gathering relics and that's why I said gathering your relics is really really important. So, I killed a few and a good amount of villagers like you can see 62 to 79 now so the amount of villagers he lost is perfectly fine for me i'm pushing him with a keep which is good so you you should do that when you are pushing your enemy just drop a keep in front of him 
Uh, you want to do some tactical stuff as well. So I, I decided here that his right side is fully open, right? And I know that he has a foot here because I already scouted it. That he made granaries, so he has a foot here. I'm gonna do some... Uh, such a decision in this situation with grabbing my knights, going to the right side and killing all his food villagers. Maybe I'm gonna lose the middle because he's gonna have all those spearmen, all those uh, palace guard, the clock tower, nest of bees, spring gold, pushing my middle when uh, my knights are going inside his base. But it doesn't matter because he's gonna lose all his villagers and the food he has. So he's gonna be idle here for a long time. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm making a few RAM with my units because I want to push this tower in, right? So I have a few spring gold, making more RAMs. I have a mangonel. And you can see, so this is this is the point where people must know how to do, how to like act in kind of situation. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push him. So I'm pushing him in the middle, slowly going to his base. Uh, meanwhile, deciding in my head, okay, I'm gonna fake a push, because he doesn't have that much of a vision, because there is no tower or scout, so I'm gonna send sneakily, immediately inside to his base, my knights, and I'm gonna push his main middle line with like uh, archers, crossbowmen, mangonets, spring gold, so he has to uh, micro his siege, he has to micro like the nest of bees to kill my archers and crossbowmen. He has to micro his springle to kill my springle. Okay, let's see what happens. I do the push, as I said, in the middle. Maybe I'm grabbing some villagers as well. Sending the knights in. Focusing down the nest of bees. Look at that. Nest of bees down. So yeah, I lost my uh, spring gold, but he doesn't have nest of bees. So I'm, I'm fighting this middle. Meanwhile, look at that. My knights are here. I'm disturbing his food. He he he's not gathering his food per minute. You're gonna say he's gonna drop down insanely because now I'm sitting his uh, sitting on his food and he will not able to reproduce uh, his military fast enough. Don't forget that these are knights, so they can easily deal. In one versus one, they can easily deal with these spearmen. And when I idle your food economy like this, it's for you. It's gonna be really, really, really hard to uh, make new units and not to lose them. So he's sending back a few spearmen and a few units on the front, but he gonna lose that because most of them palace guard and I have crossbow, right? So I, I'm spamming um, knights. I'm spamming crossbowmen from my um, archer ranges. And also, I di I'm destroying his siege. So those knights that were on the farmland, he destroying his siege, he lost both of the trebuchet and lost, uh, I think, one spring gold already. So yeah, spamming the knights. You can see the military school is on knights as well. And also, I'm sitting on the second side victory. 3 minutes and 30 sec 37 seconds left. Uh, how many villagers he has? He has 75 villagers and constantly killing his villagers. And look, he has no food. He has no food per minute. Meanwhile, look at my economy. I have a 1,200, 1,100, and I'm gonna reassign my villagers right now. 20 villagers gonna go to the wood line soon. So, yeah, uh, also set some uh, farms for myself, but there are still berries around the map so I can get her those as well and uh, let's see the upgrades I got plus two on the food gathering I have plus two on the damage plus two on the range damage so I have the most important blacksmith upgrade as well uh, I, I don't have the specialized pick uh, I was thinking because I have like mostly passive gold per minute like you can see this is mostly passive gold per minute because I have only nine villagers on the gold. So this is mostly passive gold per minute. I was like, all right, let's get level one on this one, level two on this one, because this is the most important because I don't have passive food per minute, just passive gold per minute. And that's why I, that's how I decided about the upgrades as well. And uh, as you can see, I'm spamming crossbow from the archery range and still spamming knights from the stables and um, 
I just I think I recently lost my matter, so I would queue up another one or two. I uh, like it's better to queue up two matter because I just lost it recently. But it's always good to have two matter. So now I'm just gonna slowly push and kill most of his villagers. Like I already killed 56 villagers. I lost six villagers here, but he lost like look, he's going up. He lost 60 villagers already. And going up and up, uh, 63, 72 versus 60 villagers. And I won't want to see only. But the train vendor and the two mosques have me a lot. So this is the second kind of way have to play the uh, Ottomans in my eyes. The first one is I saw that how Papipo played the Ottoman and how Papipo defeated Beastie, right? And this is the other... I think other way to play and it's gonna be really famous in season five so thank you so much for listening to this and uh, listening to my ottoman little guide or or how to play the ottoman the feudal in and the h3 rush see you next time bye bye